Hi everyone, this is Carlene, author of Plan, Organize, Rest in Peace. Come along with me on this journey as we delve into how to create that most personal gift, one that will last numerous lifetimes, past our kids, grandkids, and even great-grandkids. This gift, letters that never post, yes, capturing your thoughts, memories, and inspiration for eternity, all in a letter that never posts. These letters that you create today are shared only after your passing. So, how do you create this perfect gift? That's just the reason that we're talking today. Since many people don't know where to start or what to put in the letters, I thought it could help prompt some personal ideas. So, join me. The completion of this gift, gift of love takes a very short time commitment to complete and would have lasting effects on each family member long past your passing because it focuses each of us on recording all the positive relationships in our lives. The first person I knew who wrote these letters was my mom. She wrote five letters that never posted, a different one for each of her daughters. She wrote them all in one day, five years before she passed away. In mom's letters, she added a section on what she cherished about each of her children and even took the opportunity to share her hopes and dreams for each of us in the future. Just speaking to you about the letters I received brings joy to my heart as I remember her beautiful thoughts. So, if you are looking for something meaningful to do, stop. Go get a cup of coffee or your favorite adult beverage, and then we can begin. Well, I'm so glad that you're back. Like I mentioned earlier, unbeknownst to me, my mom wrote me and all my sisters a personal letter telling us how proud she was of us what something special we each had, and her aspiration for our future. We were devastated because of her death, and while at a memorial service, we each, from her executor, received a one-page typewritten letter. I felt love, had a few tears, and some great laughter. She included stories from my childhood, our random acts of kindness she observed. She was a loving mother in life. The items and thoughts that she shared were never shared prior to her death. There were funny stories of her wedding and mine and even an emotional appeal to trust our heart and to continue to make decisions that would make her and my dad proud. Whenever I'm feeling down or going through a tough time, I pull out that letter and it makes my world brighter. Perhaps a letter written by you today would do the same thing for your loved one one day. We all know in our hearts that we have something that we forgot to share in person. How proud we are of the people in our lives. So a simple I love you or I love how you helped your sister through this is never said. If you have kids, some of those feelings of pride, fear, and love are not stated in the moment or forgotten to share. This would be a great opportunity to share them in writing. You may be thinking, well, why should I take my time to do this? You may also be thinking that this is not an easy task, but this is far from the truth. You and you alone have the power to tell your story firsthand to those that you love. So think about this. When was the last time you sent or received a letter? I know when I get a letter, it feels good. And to know that someone was thinking of me, well, it warms my heart. If the purpose of these letters was to make you smile or even share a positive personal memory, it worked. So now take this concept and think of all the important people and friends in your life. Now, no, it won't be 200 friends and family, so don't worry about that there will probably only be a handful of letters. Think about your oldest friend, your grandchildren, your siblings, your caregiver, your stepchildren, or literally anyone who meant something to you. Wouldn't you like to leave them a final thought that they can receive long after you're gone? A personal note to help bring them closure and some peace. So the reason that this chapter is called Letters That Never Post is that you don't write it and give the letters to your family or friends now. You write it, sign it, and then put it away someplace safe. A vault where you keep your will, a trusted friend, or even just tucked away in the Bible. Someplace safe that will be retrieved and shared after your passing. So you're probably asking yourself, what do you write about? So if you don't know where to start, you can start with making a past, present, or future list and share early memories, that would be the past, 
The next would be memories or experiences that you fondly remember from the present. And finally, what you hope for them in the future. It could also include any one of the following nine thoughts. The first one is your thoughts about how important that person was in your life. This could include things like that you're proud of them. You made my day when, or even I'm just lucky to know you because. Well, you could say something like you are one of the strongest people I know. With four kids at home, I watched with amazement how you found activities to keep them engaged in learning. Your smile was unwavering, your attitude always positive, and you taught me to look at the bright side and help me find upbeat actions to keep moving forward. Thank you for letting me be a part of your life. You helped me in so many ways. My family is better because you were a part of it. You have taught me so much. So another item that you might want to share, which is item number two, is a special interaction you had with them that has fondly stayed with you. So you might want to think about things like a time that this person went out of their way uh, to help you out of a pinch, how they were there for you when you were going through a personal trauma, or just knowing them for 30 years. You could say something like, I don't think I ever told you that your one simple act of picking me up when I ran out of gas by the side of the road was huge and how touched I was that you put your life on hold to help me feel like I was not alone. I know you said it was nothing, but that and the thousands of little things that you've done made me feel loved and brought a smile to my face even when I was down. You are an excellent friend. So we talked about the first two of nine slides. So let's move on to number three, something specific that makes a relationship with them of value to you. This might include random acts of kindness, time you spent together, or even personal stories or travel that you had taken together. So you could say something like, remember when we took our first trip to Europe and our hotel reservation was lost? We wandered around the streets of Rome, hoping to find a place to lie our head. You never showed that you were afraid, but kept moving forward, going into hotel after hotel, asking for a room until 15 no's later, you got us a room. Your persistence inspired me and is something I think of often when I am facing something insurmountable. Thank you for making me who I am. You are one of the bravest people I know. So number four of nine could be about what you love about that person. This might include something as simple as, I have always loved you. Maybe share what made you fall in love with them or even a specific action or comment that was made that has stayed with you your entire life. An example might be, when I think about you, I think about all the times I should have said I love you. I am so sorry that I had just assumed that you knew. As I think about it, I realize that this is what I have I have done to you. And for that, I am so sorry. I love you every day. Your smile soars my heart. I love you. Thank you for being a part of my life. And I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as you're living, know that I could not have lived a day without you. So number five is say something about what you don't want them to forget. This could include being true to who they are, maybe something about remembering the positive experiences that you had with them growing up. It could include wishes that you want to pass on or even traditions that you would like to see carried forward. So an example might be growing up in a Polish household, the traditions were a delight for me. To share with you our heritage was one of my greatest joys. I love how excited you were to help me fill our Easter basket with all the goodies, kielbasa, oranges, colored eggs, horseradish, and even your favorite Easter candy. All this for our Sunday journey to church to get the baskets blessed. I remember how carefully after our return, you put everything in the refrigerator and pulled them out again for Easter breakfast. You were the first one up in the morning and your face glowed as we all came downstairs with you, having already presented everything so perfectly. Now that you have children, it is my hope that your memories are as positive as mine and that you will pass this tradition on to your children. Maybe every year, this would be one time after I'm gone that you can think of me. 
Number six of nine is what is the one thing that makes the person you are writing special? This is a personal note about the uniqueness of others. It could include how sensitive they are, how observant, how polite, or even how creative this person may be. An example of what I might write would be, I first observed this when you were a kid. Something would be left on the floor, a toy, a book, a paper. All of your siblings would walk by it and appear not even to notice. You, however, always observed it and on your own would pick it up and put it back and move on. You never expected praise. Never did you have to be reminded. All you did was just do it. What a wonderful and sensitive skill. I applaud that talent and hope that you will keep that up in the future. It is a special skill to be that observant. Your inside is even more beautiful than your outside. As we move to the seventh option, you might want to think about their life choices. Positive, of course. This should never be about anything negative, but rather choices like their career path. Maybe something that you didn't understand at first, but came around and now respect how they stayed clear on their passion. An example of something I might write would be, you know that I didn't like your college choice when you decided to leave the Midwest to expand your life to California to pursue your career in chemistry. I was selfish. I was only thinking of myself, but you were persistent and passionate. And I have seen a young child grow up to be an amazing woman. None of which would have happened if you had stayed safely at home. I am so proud of you for following your passion and making a life that is not only valuable to you, but to your community. Nothing can stop you. I am so proud of you. As we approach the last two possibilities, number eight is what you want them to aspire to be. It's your wish for their future. This could include your wish for a happy life for them, a fulfilling career, happiness at home, or even patience. An example of what I would write would be, as a young adult, you are at an important juncture in your life. You are smart, passionate, and ever so realistic. You are one of the strongest people I know, and I am confident that whatever the world will throw your way, you will take it head on with logic, compassion, and hope. I wish that I would be there to watch you continue to grow but know that I am looking down on you from heaven and I am so very proud of you. And finally, number nine, why you are proud that they have been a part of your life. Some thoughts might be a story of how someone overcame adversity, choices that made or even actions they did that made you proud. An example of something I might write would be, you are a great parent. You can tell just by looking at how thoughtful your kids are when you were little, you used to play mommy with your Cabbage Patch doll. It is obvious then that those behaviors and love you gave that doll would successfully transfer to your children. I am so proud of you and you will make a bigger impact than you realize on the next generation. Nine possibilities, one simple letter. Now I do want to share that not all letters should be written. Think carefully. If you find yourself writing about anything negative, stop. A negative letter or comment about how someone, as an example, has been a loser their entire life or the choice of spouse was wrong are just not appropriate. Don't go there. The best rule of thumb is that if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. If the only things you can recall about that person are negative, perhaps that person should not be on your list to get a letter at all. Remember, the letters you compose do not need to be perfect grammar or even be written in longhand. It could also be an audio or video mini documentary of your thoughts. No special equipment is needed. If you own a smartphone, you already have all the technology you need to capture your thoughts. Also, they do not have to be long volumes. Just be real, honest, and heartfelt. That message will stay with them forever personalized written story of your legacy together. So regardless of the method you choose, let your reader know the date you composed your message and what action prompted you to create it. There are no rules for what you want to cover. Pick up the pen and start writing. It will flow. 
I want to say it again. Write the letters and put them away. Yes, once you've completed the letters, just put them away. They will never be mailed to your recipients. Yes, you know you want your thoughts to be given to them, but don't share the letter while you are alive. Remember, this is your personal remembrance of thoughts, memories, warm fuzzies, and wishes for their future. This is not a debate, not a place that you must defend anything. And once you're done, I do rec recommend that you let your executor know that you would like these letters handed out in person to the recipients, maybe at the reading of the will or some private gathering that takes place after you're gone. You will be helping your selected family and friends get through their grieving process. Take a step towards peace and have something tangible to keep that represents you. The letters can be given out anytime you request. We receive mom's letters at our family meeting of, of the reading of the will two months after mom was gone. We were each handed our letter and took a moment to read, cry, laugh, and then we happily swapped with each other and read, cried, and laughed all over again. So let's summarize the possible nine ideas. Number one, your thoughts about how important that person was in your life. Number two, a special interaction you had with them that has fondly stayed with you. Three, something specific that makes a relationship with them of value to you. Number four, what you love about that person, what you don't want that person to forget. And six, that one thing that makes them special. Seven, what you think about their life choices. Remember, positive, of course. Eight, your wishes for their future. And nine, why you are proud to have had them in your life. Well, our time is over. That's chapter six of my book. My hope is that you can now create your personal story that will last many lifetimes. Please feel free to pay this forward and share it with others. Thanks for listening.